saying. Hallelujah. So when I became a man, I put away childish things. And, and I want you to know that in this text, the word man is really be, be dealing with mankind. Because I don't want you to think that this is a gender thing. But mankind. Amen? Say, so when I was a child, I spoke as a child. When, when I was younger, I did things like that. Now that when I became a man, when I became more mature, when I became older, I put away childish things. I changed the way I did things. Amen? Amen. Amen. Your form of discipline even changed when you become a man. Amen? Amen. And a lot of times, and, and put your seatbelts on for this one because it might rock a couple of people. So put your seatbelt on because I, I, I promise you if you receive what I'm about to say right now, it could change your very life. Amen. But a lot of times, and unfortunately, there was a lot of fathers not in homes. Amen? Amen. So that, that led to a lot of uh, little girls not really having a father. In their lives, amen? So now you really don't know how to submit to a man because you never really had that father figure to show you how to. Amen? amen. Then, let's go on to other instances of a man. A lot of men have been mothered all your life. Didn't have a father figure in your life. Then when God placed you in a ministry that you can, you can be matured and grown up, you don't know how to take it because you've been mothered. So when a man of God steps up to you, you automatically go back to your baby stage. Uh -oh. Oh, my God. Listen to me, man of God. Because you've been mother. When a real man of God stands in, in your face and let you know, hey, you need to straighten up your mess. You go back into the baby stage. You, you walk away and you start feeling for the pacifier. You looking for that breast milk. See, because when you come in here, God is going to strip you. He's going to take you, make shape, and mold you. And it's not going to always sound so good. Coming from the poor pit. Amen? God came to pull you out of the pit. Amen? I told you that wasn't going to sound so good, but it's true. So God trying to take the pacifiers out. So that you can be men. Amen. Amen. So that you can lead your family. Right. And I want you to know that my, my face is already set straight. Come on. Sorry. Because God is trying to bring you up to a level of living where you have no excuse to live the way you live. Amen. And he's calling you to lead your family. Amen. Amen. But when he sent you in a place to do that, you automatically get defensive because you say, he's a man just like me. How can he talk to me that way? Who does she think she is? And God simply trying to say, see, I told you you got to come in and get yourself settled. Because if you don't get settled, you'll come in and you'll sit in the house of God. You'll let the word of God go forth. And you miss everything because my emotions got involved. Because my feelings got involved. I don't like how she said that. But let me tell you something. If you really want to be what God called you to be, when are you going to really come into the house of God and say, God, I surrender to your word. I surrender to your word, your will for my life. Yeah. Yeah. Or are you just coming here because this is what we do. This is what we're supposed to do. We said praise is what? What we do. Is praise what you do or praise is what you sing? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But for whatever reason, whatever your excuse might be, it could be in a lot of times, and I'm not saying because you weren't father or your father weren't there or your mother weren't there, that gives you an excuse or a reason to live the way you live. I'm not saying that because God can fill in those blanks. I don't care who was missing. I don't care who wasn't there. God can fill in those blanks. But I said that to show you that a lot of times that's what happens. No fathers. But our Father, which is in heaven. Amen? Yeah. We can always go man to the gate. Let's go to uh, Delhi that he can ask for money as the people was coming into the temple. They carried him and set him there daily. Notice they didn't take him in the temple. They set him at the gate so that he could do this daily. 
See, if people know where to come, what's your reason for coming to the house of God? What's your motive for coming into the house of God? Is it, are you coming because you, you, you like Sister Strawberry? And, and if you keep coming, she, she might just think that you, you know, you really say. Right. Are you coming to, to the house of God because this where you know it's a lot of people and, and I can get my business off the ground because it's a lot of people and I know what people of God don't give. I know what people of God don't do. They don't support. Why are you coming to the gate? Think about that. What's your motive? See, because we want to pimp the house of God. But the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So what's your motive for really coming to the house of God? Is it so you can get your cookie sheet filled? Do we know where we come to? This is a house of worship. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Peter and John about to go into the temple. Now it said a lot of people was going into the temple, but he said Peter and John. Somebody say he saw the right ones. He saw the right ones. My God. Today. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that again. How many expected to receive something from God today? See, because your expectation got it's got to be great. And your expectation can't be all cake. It can't be all ice cream. How many times do we ever expect God? God, show me me. Show me what I need to be delivered from today, God. Or do I just want to come into your house and get a good shout on and get a good praise on? But every time you come into the house of God, you should be expecting something to happen. You should expect God to say something to you. And whether you believe it or not, or the truth of the matter really be told, God does speak to you. It's just a matter of where you hear him. See, because sometimes he speaks to us and we pass it down to the next person. That one for me. Then he'll come right back around the corner with us. Yes, it was. Boom. That was for you. Then we even go as far as saying, or, or asking our friends or sisters or anybody in the ministry, did you, did you tell somebody about what we talked about? Don't you know we serve a God so awesome? Ain't nobody got to tell nobody nothing about you. God knows everything about you. He knows your ups. He knows your downs. He knows when you in. He knows when you out. But then it amazes us because we like, I know I talked to so-and-so about that. God knows your address and he's concerned about you. The word of God doesn't come across to beat you down, to whoop you. He said, I didn't come to condemn you, but I came that you may have life and that more abundantly. Yeah. How many want to live an abundant living life? Yeah. But you got to know that it ain't about you. It's not about you. It's about God coming into your life, shaping you, making you, molding you. And anything that's not of Him, allow Him to remove it. See, because if you don't allow Him to remove it, sometimes we hold on to stuff because we like it. We're comfortable with it. I'm not ready for you to take it right now, God. Amen. Coming to the church. I don't have no money, but such as I have, I give unto thee. And that's what I say to you today. I, I don't have no fancy speech. All I have is this word of God to deliver it to To raise you up. That you can be a living sacrifice. So I don't know why you came. I don't, I don't know why you got your hands stretched forth. But I can offer you Jesus on today. I can offer you this word of God on today. That's life changing. I'm talking about a God that can change your very life. I'm talking about a God that can pull you up out the muck and the miry and the flame. That's all I have for you today is Jesus. Will you accept him? Such as I have, I give unto you. 